The designs for today's cards are inspired by Jennifer McGuire Inc. If you've not heard of Jennifer McGuire's channel, she is a very large card maker channel and she has a lot of tutorials and this particular tutorial is this must try easy instant dimension video that I got my card designs from. She has tutorials, she has pop-up cards, she does um, or shadow box cards, organization, she has her craft room which is amazing. Um, and then she does shaker cards, just all kinds of things. So if you've never checked out her channel, I'd say go check her out. She's got really cool designs. So for our cards today, we're going to be doing birthday, thinking of you, congrats, thank you, and get well. I thought that those were five of the most commonly needed cards throughout the year. So I wanted to have some on hand. And um, this is the design that I had written down from my notes after watching Jennifer's video. Um, she has a six and a quarter by five and a half piece of cardstock, and then she kind of folds it and we'll go into that. So we start with our eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock, and we're gonna cut it down to six and a quarter by five and a half. So it'll be, and I take the five and a half down the long way so that I get two pieces out of this because the 11 divided by two is your five and a half. So I start there. And then you just flip it and then you measure out six and one quarter and cut there. So now you have a piece that looks like this. I cut a total of five of those. Next, we're gonna take another eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock and cut it into quarters. So basically cut it down at five and a half inches on the 11 side, and then down to four and a quarter on the eight and a half side. This one page will give you four of these. I needed five because I'm doing five cards, so I did have to cut down one more piece of paper to get my fifth piece. So total I have 110 pound cardstock, five pieces that measures six and a quarter by five and a half. Another 110 pound cardstock that measure, and five pieces that measure five and a half by four and a quarter. And then I have 24 pound copy paper five of those that measure five and a half by four and a quarter. So these are all of the components to uh, make the basis of our cards. I also have these leftover scraps and I'm going to save those to use for my sentiments. So I'm gonna be using the Distress Oxide inks for the backgrounds of my cards. I'm starting with six colors that kind of go nicely in order together and I'm only going to be doing three at a time. Uh, so these are going to be the Seedless Preserves, Crackling Campfire, Rusty Hinge, Fossilized Amber, Peeled Paint, and Uncharted Mariner. So I'm just going to go ahead and jelly print on all of my card bases and I'm doing basically double. So there's going to be the outside of the card and then the inside of the card and they're going to match. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now is put my Distress Oxide down, brayer it out, and start with my copy paper first. Now because my copy paper is smaller than the jelly plate, I have to use a scrap piece of paper just so that I can rub it in really even. I'm just gonna keep using this scrap piece of paper until the color is too absorbed into the paper and is, is needing to be replaced. So this is what one layer looks like, and I know you can hardly even tell there's ink on the plate, but there is, and it gets really light when you brayer it out, but when you put it on paper, you can really see the colors. 
I wanted to make it a little more vibrant, so I just went in with the second coat. And you can see that's much more vibrant. So now I want to use the same three colors and apply them to my cardstock. Now I had washed my brayer, forgetting I wanted to do a second layer at this point, and my brayer was a little bit wet. So when I layered this cardstock piece on my jelly plate, there were water bubbles, I guess, in the ink and those created some interesting texture, which I didn't mind. It didn't look the exact same as the first one, but I actually thought it looked pretty cool. So you can see it has a lot more texture. So I just went in with a second layer to the cardstock base as well. Same colors. And that just kind of puts color behind those spotty areas but again it just looks pretty cool I thought that the texture on that was pretty neat so next I'm going to change up my colors my three colors on the right just by kind of moving them around a little bit and now I'll have my crackling campfire at the bottom the rusty hinge in the middle and my fossilized amber yellow at the top Instead of brayering off my brayer this time, I just set it aside because I can still use the ink that's remaining on there for my next layers. Starting again with my copy paper. And that's a nice light ombre. So I'm going to actually apply more ink so that I get more vibrant colors. If you just reapply the ink straight from the brayer, you can get a darker color, but it won't be quite as intense as adding um, more paint or more ink onto the plate. And here's what my completed copy paper piece looks like. Same three colors. Going to brayer those out and now I'm going to use my cardstock base. That's my first layer, so I'm going to do one more layer. This time, without re-inking my plate, I'm just using the ink that was left over on my brayer. So now I have my two pieces, my cardstock and my copy paper base. Switch up my colors again, just by rotating them. Now I have my rusty hinge on the bottom, fossilized amber in the middle, and the peeled paint on top.
And I'm just going to go through the exact same process here. I did pull out a new sheet of brayer off paper because the other one was getting a little bit too full of ink and the ink was actually transferring to the back of my card. So the focus of these five cards is more about um, kind of getting the backgrounds completed and the actual card made and even the sentiment, but I didn't focus in this video so much with the embellishments. In fact, you'll notice I didn't do any embellishments at the end of the video. And I did that for a reason. Um, number one, the video is going to be very long if I tried to embellish on top of it, but also um, I would like to save the embellishing part for when I know who the recipient is going to be. And then I can kind of personalize it before I give it out to that person. I can either personalize it with stickers that are already pre-made rub-ons, or I can make some die cuts or stamping, or I can doodle on them. So they give me a really nice um, base palette to work with and the sentiments already on there so all I have to do is add a few little touches maybe even some rhinestones or glitter depending on who I'm giving it to and that would just finish off these cards really nice so I'm not concerned in this video with um, the embellishing part but if you do watch Jennifer McGuire's video where she makes the cards like this hers have um, really cool stamping technique that she uses stamping stenciling um, and hers have really cool designs on them and she does embellish hers so if you wanted to see what that would look like you can see her video and she's got several of them using this kind of technique so I'm moving on to my next color palette which is the fossilized amber peeled paint and uncharted mariner and just kind of going through the same process for all of my five card base combos. The nice thing about batching out some of these cards all at the same time is since I already have my supplies out and I'm already kind of getting inky, it just gets um, a lot of these done in advance. And I know I like these colors. I know they're fun and vibrant. So I know they're ones that I'll definitely like using for um, my five occasions that I've picked out. And I picked those occasions because those are the most popular kind of cards that I make but you may find yourself reaching for five different kinds of cards. So this is just more to give you an idea. So now that I finished off my last batch of ombres here, I've got my five background pieces. Now I'm ready to cut out the cardstock size. So I'm separating the um, copy paper at the bottom and the cardstock pieces at the top. And so for the top ones, I'm going to use my die cuts and just cut out a shape out of each of them. I ended up just going with the rectangle and the circle and alternating them. And then I wanted to see if I wanted to put them over the same colors, if I wanted to flip them or use them on a totally different background. So I, think I ended up liking having it on a totally different background. So I kind of went through each one and placed them over the, the background that I thought it looked pretty cool with. All right, so I'm happy with how those look. So that's gonna be how each of my card bases are going to look. So I'll set those aside. Now I'm going to fold down or score my six and a quarter by five and a half pieces. I'm gonna score at one quarter inch 
one half inch and one inch on each side. And I'm making sure my six and one quarter is on the top side and my five and a half is on the side, just so I know I'm scoring on the correct side. Then to fold these score lines, you fold over at the one inch then you fold backwards at the half inch, and then you fold forwards at the quarter inch. And then you just repeat that on the other side. So that's gonna be our base. That'll give us the pop-up or dimension. So I flipped my scoreboard around um, because I was able to hold on to the paper better with my hand this way. And I just kind of scored up from those quarter, half, and one inch marks. Did the same thing where I scored each of them and just finished off the rest of my card bases. Now these are the leftover pieces that I cut out from each of my cardstock bases and I'm going to use those on the back. So my idea here is um, to have them in the back where I can actually put a sentiment or write my the inside of my card behind it. So I only wanted to glue one piece of it. So I'm going to create a little bit of a fold where I'll be able to um, score that fold it, glue it, and then I'll be able to lift that piece up and right underneath it. I just scored mine at a quarter inch. And you can see I'll glue it on the back and then I'll be able to flip it up and write inside. And that is a way that I can use those pieces that I cut out because they're nice and already colored. And then I can also add another additional sentiment on the outside of those. So now I'm going to start assembling each of my cards. We're going to start with the birthday card. Uh, for this one, I'm going to put this kind of like a fireworks background um, and stamp it onto the copy paper. So I'm going to just press that down. I'm using my Versamark ink and I am doing a few layers of this. Um, I'm not going to show it all on camera, but um, if you've done any stamping with a large background stamp pad, you know that the impression may not be perfectly even. So I've, I did a couple of layers of the Versamark just to make sure it got all the way through. Then I'm using my gold embossing powder and I'm just going to cover the entire background with my gold. So this is the happy birthday sentiment I picked out and I'm just kind of measuring to make sure it actually fits inside the frame and I'm going to use that on one of my scrap pieces of cardstock. I'm going to use the same gold embossing powder and then I cut it down and started cutting in towards the happy. Um, my idea here was I wanted to have the happy part kind of fussy cut around and that way it, it's a little bit more interest and a little more of the background will show through. So I'm just going to cut around the, the word happy. Okay, I'm happy with how that looks and it gives some more interest to the background here. 
So that, I did shave down a little bit more of the sentiment right below birthday, and that way it was, again, showing as much of the background as I could. I'm just going to apply this birthday sentiment right behind my frame, and I just need to make sure it's centered. Then I'll just trim away those extra pieces that are hanging out. Now I've got my three components here. So the fireworks piece, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. That's my card copy paper piece. I'm going to apply that to the inside of that folded pop-up piece. And then I just press my sides down and put glue on that top quarter inch and start applying my frame. I'm only going to do one side at a time. I like using the wet glue here because it gives me some wiggle room in case it doesn't get lined up perfectly the first time. Then I flip it over and press it down and then I have both sides applied. And then once I'm happy with that, I just make sure everything looks good. So it doesn't stand on its own. So I had another idea with this little piece that I'm creating here. I'm going to use it as kind of like a kickstand. So first I'll decorate it. I'm going to put my sentiment that kind of goes with the outside sentiment. So it's a happy birthday card. And I'm going to put the today is the day on the top part of this little extra flap and I'm going to emboss it with the same gold embossing powder just to tie it all in and so it all matches So to apply this little flap, I'm just gonna put glue on that quarter inch fold that I had created. And I'm gonna line it up with the bottom, but also center it as best, the best that I can with um, just eyeballing it. I'm also using the flaps for the pop-up part to make sure it's kind of centered inside there. Then you just press down along the seam there and let that dry but even while it's drying you can see it kind of pops out and creates this little easel and this way the card is able to stand so it does two in one it gives you a place to write your sentiment behind it it also has a spot where you can decorate the outside of it and it creates this easel stand to make it so that you can display it so that is my first card, the birthday card. Next, we're going to do the thinking of you card. So we're gonna go through the same steps. I, for this one, instead of using a stamp, I used these die cuts that I had saying thinking of you. I die cut it out of my scrap piece of cardstock and I thought I would like to use that part that I had cut out and the words. On top of it so I'm going to do the silver embossing for this part I'm just gonna emboss right over these words and 
Um, to do that, I'm just putting some Versamark sticky ink down. I'll use my silver embossing powder and melt that down. And then that'll create a really nice shiny background. Um, it had some bubbles in it just because the powder didn't get everywhere, so I'm doing another application. And then next for the background of this card, I'm going to use these butterflies for this stamping. I'm going to use the same Versamark ink. This time, trying to see if I can get a better stamped impression if I put it more centered onto my platform. By using it in the corner, I feel like I, I don't get the edges very well, so I'm just kind of taping it to the center. Then I'll apply my Versamark ink. Before I apply this to my background, I am using, this is just a little cornstarch pouch that I had made, just to make sure that the embossing powder only sticks to the butterflies. For this embossing, I'm gonna be using these Distress Embossing Glazes. I've got the Broken China, the Cracked Pistachio, and the speckled egg is the middle color and I'm just dumping them back into their containers after I'm done with each section. And I'm not embossing it at this point. I'm just putting the powder over it, dumping the powder off, putting the powder back into the container, then doing the next color. So I did all three colors, kind of like an ombre. You can see they're very, very bright, but once you emboss over this with this glaze, it really mutes those colors. So I was a little worried that blue was gonna be very vibrant, but because it's a glaze, it kind of took on the background color. Um, so they look really, really cool. Just kind of stick, they, they stand out a little bit, but they're not standing out too much like how the opaque embossing powders work. So for these, you will see a little bit of the background color. So I thought that looked pretty cool. Uh, then I went ahead and glued that to the inside of my card base. Now I'm putting my sentiment on the back side of the frame. This is my very shiny silver thinking of you piece. It really catches the eye. It looks like real silver. Then you clip away again the end pieces that are sticking out. And to make it so that the words actually um, have the inside pieces. I took the white that I had cut out and I'm just going to kind of carefully glue those at a little bit of an angle so it's almost like a shadow over the words. All right, now that I had all my sentiment pieces assembled, I will assemble my frame over the pop-up base. This time to line it up, I kind of made it so that I could actually see the lines along the side here. Again, I have the wet glue, that way I can wiggle it a little bit if needed. And then I'll do the other side. Now for the back piece, the little flap, I'm gonna use this little hello with a flower. I'm gonna use the same silver embossing powder here and apply that to the back side of my card. Again, lining it up with the bottom of my card so that I can create an easel. The third card that we're gonna make is the congrats card. You could do congratulations as well, but I happen to have a congrats stamp instead of congratulations. So I'm just using this background, pretty cool geometric for my stamping. I'm using liquid platinum. Now, 
I was having a hard time getting the impression on the entire background, but I actually thought it looked pretty cool, so I just left it. I went ahead and embossed my sentiment pieces as well and cut out my congrats in the same way that I did the happy birthday, just on the bottom part. And I glued these, I had these little stars I cut out of the circle area and I took the stars and kind of glued them back on at a little bit of an angle so that more of the background would show through. Then I put my congrats sentiment in the center, clipped away the ends and put my embossed piece on the background. Applied my frame over the pop-up feature and then added my back piece that was my easel. So this one's a circle, but you can see even the circle still works as an easel pop-up. Our fourth card is going to be the thank you and I just did the same steps. I embossed the background piece. I used copper embossing powder for this card. Here I created almost like a little jig out of just thicker cardstock or watercolor paper I think it was and that way I can line up in more of the center of my stamping platform. Um, for this sentiment I used some black embossing for the banner and the gold the copper embossing for the thank you and I repeated the copper embossing on the back side and I just went ahead and assembled this one the same way I had assembled my first cards all right moving on to our fifth card the get well card this one I'm using some kaleidoscope embossing powder and when this one's heat embossed it creates different colors so it looks really pretty especially in the light and then I'm using that same kaleidoscope embossing powder over black ink for the get well sentiment and over this back piece that says everything will be okay so that they all match so here they are put together so I have the first one, get well, everything will be okay. Then I have my thank you card. This is with the copper embossing and some black embossing. You are so sweet with some flowers. And then I have my congrats card. This one has a cool geometric background with the platinum, liquid platinum embossing and dream big in the back. Then I have the thinking of you on silver with the distressed glazes on the butterflies and the silver on the back, hello. And for my birthday card, I used the gold and I just used that for the sentiment on the back as well. Today is the day. So those are my five cards that I made for this series. Um, these were, again, just to have on hand. I do tend to look for a card and sometimes I want something that's a little more neutral that I can either give to a guy or a girl. I feel like these could be either way and I can give these out um, throughout the year. So these are great stock items. Um, let me know what other sentiments you use the most. If you use birthday the most, which one of these would you say you would definitely use and which ones would you say is not in here that you would add to this. So um, birthday I think is my top ones that I go for. I always want to do the birthday cards. So here's what they look like with the easel part, the side view, and the front view. Those are for my rectangle cards. And then for my two circle cutout cards, this is what they look like from the side, the front, and the back. And that concludes the video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and had fun making some cards with me. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.